Okay. Okay, now I think there should be sound. So is there sound? Yeah, now there is sound. Okay, then I start again. The <laughs> Actually, it wasn't really important, because all I said was that it's about nothing. This is about nothing. It's not for anything. It's not for anything else, because this is all there is. So all there is is sitting and breathing and a computer and a screen. And that's all. That's it. There is no other. There is no next to this, which means that this is for nothing. It's not for anything else. It's not for you. It's not for me. It's not for world peace. It's not for awakening the planet. Or It's just for nothing, which actually is freedom. That which is, that which appears, is for nothing. It's absolutely free to be as this. That is the beauty, so to say. <clears throat> this is nothing. This is not things. It's nothing and everything. It's nothing in the sense of it's not, not this or this. Oneness is not an object or is not a state. Oneness is not the computer. Oneness is not a feeling of happiness. So it's nothing in that sense. What appears is nothing because it's not separate. But it's also everything. It's also all. So what is, is nothing and everything. Or one could say it's no thing. This, sitting on a computer, feel having feelings, thoughts, a screen, a computer, is no thing. It's not a thing. No one knows what it is. No one can know because no one experiences it. There's no one experiencing it. There's no separate experience of what is. Or what appears. Now, what also can appear, what also can be, so to say, is a sense of I am. It's a sense of separation. It's a sense based on the experience of reality and separation. So within the experience, it's totally real that I am real. That I'm a separate entity and I'm separate from the rest, from the computer, from the table, from my surrounding. There is me and the situation. So this apparent me lives, let's say, in duality. It lives in a separate world or it's a setup of separation. Within this setup, there seems to be an unfulfillment, as if there's an unfulfillment about this, in a way. And um, one could say it is unfulfilling, in a way, one could say it is unfulfilling because it is experienced life, or what appears, is experienced as something real. And it's experienced as something separate and real. 
So all that happens in a way is away, is distant. It's not 100% in a way. So within this sense of I am, there is unfulfillment and the seeking starts. Then there is a seeking for what seems to be lost in a way. Now, the dilemma is that because this apparent me lives in a world of reality, it assumes fulfillment to be also something real. So all it seeks is something real. Money, more money, liberation, wisdom, transcendence, uh, peace in the family, peace of mind, world peace, health. When the house is built, um, when work is done, um, the end of me. So it seeks something. No matter, um, <clears throat> no matter what it seeks, it seeks for something. And it, because it experiences this in separation, it assumes this something to be in the future at another time, at another place. So tomorrow, when I'll be enlightened, then... Uh, tomorrow, or in ten years, when I released all my blocks, then... Uh, in ten lives, when I meditated enough, then... Uh, So, the apparent me seeks for something at a time, at a place. But all that is, is no thing. Out of time and out of space. So, the apparent me seeks for something which doesn't exist. And that's how it lives. It lives in a constant... There's nothing. And because it doesn't find anything, it keeps on seeking. That is where the setup of I am ends. For I am, there is no finding. Within this setup, there is no finding. Respectively, all that seems to be found, <clears throat> or the fulfillment of what seems to be found, just fades. Because it's nothing. So, the dilemma for me is that it can only seek, but never find. It will not find. So what this is about, in a way, is to point out that this whole setup of I am and separation and seeking is not real. There is no reality in it. It's a dream, one could say. But there is no dreamer. One could say it's oneness itself dreaming the dream of separation. So what we talk about here, in a way, is the end of that dream. What happens in the end of that dream is the death of me, the sense of I am dissolves, let's say, or dies or vanishes or melts with the outside. It's where me melts with the outside. It's the melting together of the subject object, one could also say. What remains is this. Sitting and breathing and a screen and talking and hearing. 
but the but surprisingly without me it's all and it's in a way enough it's this nothing else is left it's the collapse of I am and the collapse of experience so what remains is the unknown what remains is no thing what remains is this that's it the just is nothing else <clears throat> So we are not doing steps here. Nothing is going to happen. No one will become enlightened. No one will lose an eye. There is no eye. There is no separation. And there is no dream to leave. All I've said so far is a story. Ralph asks, Ken, what you talk about be wanted? No, not really. I mean, <clears throat> the apparent me may say that it wants this, but what it actually wants is something. But me can't, uh, can't want no thing. It actually can't want it, uh, its absence. If it gets an idea of what this is about, it it wants uh, it can't really want this no it's impossible <clears throat> because all the apparent me wants is something for itself is something which it can experience it wants to survive in the end <clears throat> so no me doesn't want no thing. <laughs> Give me something. <clears throat> me doesn't want just this. It wants something else. <clears throat> For itself.
Ralph said, thank you. Is time created out of separation? Well, time isn't really created, but yes, time is part of the part of the dream of I am. So all the apparent me does is to live in time, but not as a as a concept. It experiences time. It experiences uh, that time goes on in a way. It experiences itself in time. But it's part of the dream. There is no time. So it's not really created. It's just a dream that there is something like time. But uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, time is part of its experience to live in time. Yeah. <coughs> So when me dies or when me drops, there is no time, but there is no one experiences time. Who, there's no one left who experiences timelessness. There's just no one. Kiel, Kiel writes, could you say the me is also a kind of bubble filled with nothing and that entrapped nothingness wants to pop. <laughs> well, not really, because what's being said here is in the end that there is no bubble. Because if you have the picture of a bubble, you immediately have separation. Because there's nothing out, nothingness outside, nothing that I nothingness inside, but a separation. In fact, there is no bubble. But as a description, one could say it like this. I mean, the sense of me, or what happens for some people, is this this seeking, this seeking energy, and this. Um, No, 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 sorry. The seeking energy happens for everyone. It's entrapped nothingness wants to pop. Yes, in a way, me me doesn't want to pop, but it's oneness itself appearing as the death of me, as this popping. It's oneness. It's not the me. I mean, what I like about this picture is that it has nothing to do with a with a bubble. It has nothing to do with me. It's not uh, there's n not any connection with what the me believes to do or not to do in order to become happy and liberation or the end of me. Me has uh, the end of me has nothing to do with what me does or doesn't do. It's just the end of me, and in a way, it's oneness itself which appears as the popping of me, if it happens. But there's no need for this. There's, there's really a need for this to happen. Because there is no separation, so there is no bubble. So all there is, is already is oneness. Ralph asks, what is the difference between seeking and the natural drive towards nothing? Well, I wouldn't say that there's a difference. I mean, seeking in a way is the natural drive towards nothing. 
But as I said, as the me can't imagine nothing or only can seek something within its story, it seeks something. So in a way, it's always a natural drive seen natural in a sense uh, seen from the apparent me it can't live without this drive because it experiences itself as separate so this the seeking is in a way a natural drive He says, yeah, it's just a picture, but could you say that beyond the me there is a kind of longing? A resonance seems to need some kind of separation. <sighs> Kia. Right, I mean the resonance can't be me, right? No, I mean the dilemma is that's just what happens. It is oneness appearing as... appearing as this drive. It's, it's actually the same. I think it's the same what Ralph means with the natural drive towards. I mean, what often happens that if people meet this message, this message becomes more and more obvious. So it be, it's more and more obvious that it's not the me and uh, that this drive takes over. And it becomes so obvious that it's in a way not the me, that there is no one in control, what you could say like this, around this message, but it's not needed, it's not necessarily only around this message. But what seems to happen around this message is that, that this drive obviously becomes uncontrolled. Because before, or as long as there's me running, of course it, it lives in control, in the dream of control. And it also believes in a way that it controls its seeking or that seeking is right, actually, that I have to find this and that it's part of life. For most people, seeking is normal life. The work on working on happiness is the daily life. But yeah, it can happen that or if there still is someone, it feels like, it can feel like, as if something bigger takes over. Yes, of course. And yes, in that sense, you're right. It's not you. But in the end, even resonance is a story, because there is nothing resonating with anything. There aren't two. There is no, there, there isn't even resonance. So resonance also is just a description what appears. Because it's oneness itself, or the sense of I am is oneness, and the popping of that sense is also oneness. So there, there never was a me, and there never, and there isn't a me that dies. It's oneness appearing as this, appearing as the end of apparent separation. <laughs> and for some apparent period of time, this may feel like this. The drive seems to take over. Yes. It never was, me never was in control. It's just the end of the dream of control. <laughs> I 
I mean, me can't force liberation to happen, but it can't also prevent it. Me can't prevent its death. Can't prevent anything or force anything. Though it may live in the dream as well. Oh, hi. Johanna writes, hi Andreas, greetings from Berlin. Hello. Ralf, Ralf writes, so what to do if you can do nothing? No need for orientation? No. Of course, who, who would need it or who should need it? There is no orientation. I mean, there is nowhere to go. There is, or, there is no one on a path. Doing happens, not doing happens, life happens, this happens. Well, apparently, but there's no need for any orientation because there's no direction. There are no directions. There's no one to choose 
his or her direction. <laughs> There's no one going anywhere. No. But just it's not I don't really say that you can't do nothing I, there is no one who can choose to do or not to do there just is no one and what happens in that sense doesn't matter There's no orientation here. <laughs> Nothing to hold on. The apparent me needs to know or needs to be sure to do the right thing for its future fulfillment. It needs to know to be on the right path because it's the path that will lead to fulfillment. So it's important for the apparent me, it's important to, to be to be sure where it stays and to walk in the right direction. There isn't a direct direction there is no path there is no future and there is no future fulfillment all there is is this all there is is what apparently happens there's no direction so they can't in fact they can't be oriented So, in fact, or in liberation, one could say, the question what to do doesn't really arise. I could say, do what you want, but... Of course, there's also no one who can choose to do what he wants. A strange fellow writes, <laughs> okay, okie dokie, doggy, no doggy, groggy, no groggy, a donkey, no donkey, path, right, wrong, goal, no goal. Yeah, it doesn't matter.
Ralph writes, yes, being is the second half of my life. Uh, being in the second half of my life, life teaches really that it goes nowhere. You are not in the driving seat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's in a way, it's just obvious. I mean, for the apparent me, it's um, it's not nice, so to say. It doesn't feel good for the apparent me to realize that. Um, Though what we are talking about is not the realization of me, but even within the story or even within the experience of I am, there can be a sense of, oh, this doesn't go anywhere. And yes, no one's driving. There's no driver. Yeah. Of course not. I mean, in fact, there is no, no life. There's no, no ongoing thing. Boris writes, but you have to have a goal in life. That's a sentence I sometimes hear. And it seems to be so serious and right. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's a dream. There is no goal. In fact, there isn't a life. There just is no goal. But yes, that is what... Um, yeah, it's it's part of the dream and people support this idea. It's For, for most people it's very important. Orientation, as we had before, to have orientation in life. To go a path. To be on a path, to have a goal and to follow this goal. Because then your life makes sense and meaning. You can you can add meaning to your life or more meaning by, a, by the right goal. It's all within the dream and it's all to... The idea is to feel good, of course, that you have to work on your happiness or you have to work on your life in order to be full or fulfilled. Yeah. There just is no goal. This doesn't have a goal. It's, as I said, it's, it's for nothing. This is for nothing, which is freedom. A strange fellow who keeps, goes on, matter, no matter, who knows. One knows, no one knows. Yes, exactly, no one knows. He writes, yeah, no choice. And going to a meeting, in a way, is like everything, a non-event. But in appearance, it seems to be a movement to an opening. An energetic understream that's also an appearance, of course. Yes, that's what seems to happen. That, I mean, it's also a story. I mean, uh, but within this... Um, Yes, it's as you describe. That what seems to happen. I mean, in the what, what happens in the in the meetings or, or here, in a way, is that what is said becomes obvious or may become obvious, but not to the me. In a way, it's it's a misinterpretation of me, which may say, oh, it becomes obvious for me. In fact, it doesn't. So yes, what seems to happen is an opening or. <clears throat> 
I mean, also there, I would say, in fact, it's the apparent me with it, which interprets with, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, for it, it's like, you know, it feels like an opening. It feels like I am opening up in a way. Yes. Yeah. That's the appearance. It's oneness. The movement is within the story in a way. Because it's the apparent me which lives in the dream of movement, of something happening, of something going on. But yes, that is what seems to happen in the meetings. Some... Uh, or can happen, doesn't have to, but can happen. Some... Uh, yeah. schreibt, I like you. Mm. I mean, I sometimes say concerning these meetings, oneness comes from behind, it kills you from behind. <clears throat> Johanna writes, me too. <laughs> That's the endless dream. Ralph says, yes, your teaching is an antitoxin against the pressure of should, should, should. <laughs> yes, that's how me lives. I should, I have to, I must, I... Yes. It's a dream. Paula writes, the butterfly over your head looks very funny, like a hair slide. <laughs> and there's a butterfly. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's actually uh, some dress, some dressing up. For the life chat. <laughs> Cordelia writes, exhale happens hearing you. 
That's liberation, actually. It's a story because there is no liberation. But liberation is like the last exhalation. It's not you exhaling, it's life exhaling you. It's death. Liberation is the death of I am. And with every every death, or there also may be, um, which is a story too, before there, there might be a strong fighting, but the last exhalation is always peaceful and total and absolute. <sighs> yes. <clears throat> For no one, of course. No one survives the last exhalation. Maybe just because it came up some some questions before. Um, in fact, this is not a teaching. Because what's being said here is that this is all there is. And this can't be told. And hasn't to be told. sitting in front of a screen and hearing the sound can't be learned, doesn't have to be learned. It's all there is, that's it. There's nothing else. So I'm not teaching anything. A strange fellow <laughs> writes, no opening up, not closed, nor seated, no loss, no gain. Which idea can walk as an idea of itself? Me? A story of no go. Go. No go any further. Command would be a pure lie. 
no comment as well, no in-between line to state anything. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I didn't really get the question. Which idea can walk as an idea of itself? Me. Well, me is not an idea and for sure there is no me. So Case writes, hello by the way, as there seem to be not too many big questions anymore. <laughs> How was India? <laughs> it was great actually. It was cool. It took me some time to adjust, but um, when that happened, I enjoyed it very much. We arrived yesterday evening, in fact. Our plane was delayed, so we had to stay one night in Oman. Which was cool, because we had a great dinner and a great breakfast. We stayed in a hotel. But so, we arrived yesterday evening. Yeah, it was interesting and cool. Yeah. Hardly anyone came to the talks, which was fine too, actually. So I could write a little bit. <laughs> I used the time for writing. A strange fellow but was not a question. A question would want an answer. If a question, then unformulated. Yeah, I thought so, that it wasn't really a question. I just saw a question mark, so I thought maybe it was meant as a question. Then I said something to it, but I thought so. I don't have the feeling that there's much question going on. What happened on the way to the airport? We had to go to the airport at night with the taxi. And uh, we were driving through a village, or we just started in a, in a village. And there were all of a sudden we drove through a corner and there were people <laughs> making a big fire in the street. I think um, they they burned their rubbish, but there wasn't other way to another way to go for us, so we have to drive through the fire, and uh, the taxi driver for a moment stopped, 
thought, look left and right, but there wasn't another way, so he just drove through the fire. <laughs> this was really cool. <laughs> and it was high, it was like we could look out of the window and there was fire. Not down, it was the same, the same height. This was pretty cool, actually. And I had some discussions with the uh, so-called uh, Vedanta teachers. This was also interesting. But there was no meeting. There was no meeting between this and what they say. It was quite interesting, but I expected it actually. There was much going on with knowing. They have it with knowing. And one can come to know and to increase knowing and go further in knowing. <coughs> of course, this can't be known. Oneness can't be known. Cordelia writes, Andreas as a stuntman. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Boris writes. Did you have an uh, did you have an appearance of Ramana? <laughs> well, he appeared on many many pictures, I have to say. <clears throat> and I was surprised, but well, I knew already, but I was still surprised how much teaching was was around him. A strange fellow writes, everything is a question or nothing, and no answer brings really something. So the question is questionless and unanswerable. To ask what to do would be inadequate. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm, everything is a question, I don't know. No, there, there is no question, but for sure no answer brings uh, something. Yeah. There is no answer. Of course, there can't be. There is no answer for the for the dilemma of seeking because there is no real seeking. There is no answer to the question of how to overcome separation because there is no separation. It just is no answer.
Keel writes, I love how precise you respond to the questions. So great. And yes, indeed, although every time the me thinks it has an opening, it's only nothing. Again, it seems now also words in a way. A resonance is there, like your words drum the resonance. Another picture, of course. Yes, it's great. It's really great. I mean, with the opening, I mean, that's just oneness appearing as an opening. But if the me thinks it's my opening, it turns out to be nothing. Just because there is no real opening. It's no thing appearing as an opening. And that's it. That's wonderful. That's sweet. And that is aliveness. But for no one, no one is having it. The one who wants to grasp it, the one who experiences as his opening, it's this, it's empty. It's great. I mean, with the resonance thing, one could tell a story about it, because what's being said here is all there is. So one could almost say, which is a story too, that of course everything resonates with this, because all there is is no thing. This is no thing. And the speaking, let's say, of no thing also is no thing. So one could say everything is vibrating with this. But nothing is vibrating with this. Everything is this. This vibrant aliveness, one could say, which is unknown. Sorry for using, for describing it. It's, it's unknown. But it's very alive and vivid. <clears throat> Apparently. Ah, I just overlooked something. Ralf wrote to the fire thing. Like in life, no alternative. You have to go through the fire. <laughs> it happens. No one has to go through the fire. But that's what seems to happen. <laughs> But yes, there's no way out. Whatever there is, or whatever there appears, there's no way out.
deeper says sweet and sad at the same time I don't really know what you mean what's sweet and sad at the same time that's it Ralph writes, no way out, but no have to as well. Yes, of course, there's no way out is freedom. You can't go out and you don't have to, of course. I mean, that's all the apparent, the apparent me trying. That, that is all. That's all the apparent me does to find a way out. How do I come out of here? How can I be above it by being enlightened or knowing the path or be wiser or how can I get out of this? It's impossible and of course not needed. Yes, it's both. Kiel says, Thanks again. Great. Strange, when I ask a question, there seems to be a vulnerability. Because it feels also very intimate in a way. Or is that just me being scared for death? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I can't say. But of course, in a way, for the apparent me, it's, it's facing death. That's what happens here. It's facing death. <laughs> and in a way this um yes it's very existential apparently but uh, seeing from the apparent me it's existential i mean in a way this also is about all the me about all the me's goals, its hopes, all it wishes for the future, all the all the pictures it lives in, all the what seems to be important for me or not important for me, or so in a way, this destroys his whole world. This destroys the whole world of me. And it's, uh, as I said before, it's about all its hopes. And it's about all it deeply longs for. So, yes, it's in a way very intimate. Yeah. Cordelia writes, for nobody. Yeah, of course, always, always. Kiel writes, B is me. Yes, in a, in a way, yes, there is no me. There just is B, in a way. Or there just is this, which is unknown. But it's like this, that is the miracle, that it is like this. again Deeper writes 
There is a yearning for this, but no way for the me. Yes, exactly. That's, that's what happens. That is what apparently happens. That is oneness. That's it. There isn't anything else. Just the yearning, just an apparent yearning for what's already there. But is assumed somewhere else. Ah, all right. Now I get it. Ralf schreibt, is life for you effortless? There's no for you or there's no for me. And yes, oneness. I mean, all there is is this and this is totally effortless. There's no effort. Oneness doesn't put effort in this. It's there's no effort. But effort may appear effortlessly. <laughs> but I there is no there is no one. I don't have a life in which I move and act and decide. That's all that's happening. Andreas is happening effortlessly. But there all but sometimes there seems to be effort. But there's no one doing it, there's no one choosing what happens. There is no Andreas choosing how Andreas is or behaves or feels or what he does or doesn't do or what he thinks. It's just oneness it's aliveness itself or better it's no thing so i can't answer this question because there is nothing for me but yes all there is effortlessly is as it is no thing appearing as what appears no thing appearing as this there's no effort in this <clears throat>
Well, the, this message, one could say, this message has nothing to do with me or has nothing to do with Andreas, how Andreas is or behaves and what he likes and doesn't like and what... There just is no uh, Andreas, let's say. There is no me. There is no one who chooses anything. There just is this. No thing appearing as it appears. That's all. There isn't anything else. And for sure there is no no enlightened one. Paula says language get gets difficult more and more. Well, nothing is said in a way. No matter how many words are spoken, they don't carry a truth. There is no truth in anything. It's all stories. Martin said, writes, Hi everybody, isn't life effortless for everyone? Yes, um, no. Well, not in the dream of I am, because the apparent me, in a way, lives in effort. It, it thinks it has to do. But yes, as I said, oneness appears effortlessly as it appears. Yes, so yes, it's totally effortless. There's no effort in this being as it is. And it's no effort. Oneness doesn't need effort to be as I am. And oneness doesn't need effort to appear as you. Or as a computer. Effort is the dream. or part of the dream of I am. Martin writes, even the apparent me appears effortless. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's oneness. No one's doing it. Ralf asks, does the sense effort drives from the sense of wrongness? Yeah, one could say so in a way, or it's all part of the dream of I am, that I'm a me experiences itself as separate, which seems to be unfulfilling. So it lives in the dream of for, for it to ha for there to be an effort in order to become fulfilled. I mean, actually, it may happen in, in, 
in more ways. Either it thinks that there has to be an effort, I have to do it, or uh, more like a victim that I have to, I can't do it, but I have to to wait, which in a way is also an effort. But it's It lives in the dream that I have to do something in order, or I have to not do some things in order. It somehow lives in effort. And actually that's how all people live. You have to. You have to earn money. You have to go to work. You have to meditate. But all in order to have a good life. To be happy. To be um, enlightened. You have to do it. which is a dream or as i said it's part of the of the setup of i am or i have to behave in a in a certain way or i have to become in a certain way more pure more devoted more surrendered or whatever Da schreibt, er uh, writes, <laughs> what is man? A dream. There is no such thing as man. There's just this, which is no thing appearing as this. There isn't anything else. And for sure there aren't objects or there aren't things. So there isn't man, or there aren't men. Okay, in that sense, there is nothing to do and nothing to not do, respectively, there isn't anyone, there isn't a person, there isn't an instance who could choose to do A or B or to not do A and B. In fact, it doesn't matter because all there is is what is all there is is this no thing the unknown aliveness whatever you may call it appearing as this there is no separation there is no goal there is no direction there is nothing to get there is nothing to get from anything that's all and that's it nice that you joined thank you